Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Let's get into our session today. I want to talk about creative visualization and um, visualization as a bit of a metaphor. So we are consistently trying to know how the world is. So how, how is it that I should be in this moment? What will keep me safe? As we've discussed many times here in Magnetic Mind, between the ages of zero and four, we code up uh, an unconscious agenda uh, that is helping us to regain what we feel that we've lost. And this unconscious agenda normally captivates our attention for some people uh, a lifetime as they try to find what they've lost, whether they don't feel perfect or not good enough or not worthy in a complete uh, disoriented way. Well, well, it is an oriented way, but a dysfunctional orientation. And so the way that that, uh, we know uh, what it is and how we should be is that in every moment, our unconscious is telling us we don't have to learn it again. And it does this by creating an internal representation in your mind. And this internal representation instructs us us on what is safe, okay, and and how to create belonging. So if you're asked to go put on a a speech, um, not everybody here, but, you know, your unconscious might code up a memory of you getting laughed at and, and then attach meaning to it. And by the way, the meaning is how you feel. The meaning is derived from the feeling. What that means is, is if when you create the image of you going out there and and doing the the talk, if that feels scary, then that will mean to you that that's not something you want to do. So the feeling and the meaning are very much interlinked. Anyway, so someone might have this coded up memory of getting laughed at at age four for presenting something and it not feel good. Another person might remember everyone clapping and it feeling good. And so even though they're both about to go into the same reality, because of our coding, because of our internal representation, they feel different and therefore the meaning that they interpret uh, on that event is completely different. Okay, so so we constantly have this meaning making machine. And so in in our formative years, we wanted to figure out, okay, how do I stay safe? How do I belong in this world? And we picked up a lot of coding, a lot of meaning. And now as we move into the world, Whenever we find a a new experience we've never had before, what we're trying to do is go, okay, have I experienced that before? Yes or no? If the answer is no, our brain goes, well, what's it like? You know, what's it actually going to be like? And it it will find something to associate with, okay? And so the, the interesting thing is your unconscious, which creates the feeling, actually doesn't know the difference between something that's happening externally, okay, so something that's actually outside of your senses, like, you know, me picking up this pen, okay, or if that's happening internally as well, where it's it's not uh, just something that's outside, but it's actually inside your mind. Does that make sense? And, and here's why it doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know the difference because either way, where the unconscious joins in on the system is from whatever is created in your mind. This is very interesting. Okay? Very interesting. See, if I see something externally, it still goes through my eyes and creates an image in my mind, right? If I feel something externally, it still goes through my, my senses and I, and I feel the experience in my mind. I'm going to explain this and you're going to experience it even more in a second. If I hear something, even though it's outside, it still goes into my mind. Okay, so what's interesting is your unconscious literally cannot know if that thing is happening outside of your body or if it's just starting in your mind. Right. Because it only ever picks up the signal from your mind. And then whatever signal it picks up, it creates the feeling. So this is why recode is so important, because you've got coding that is telling you the meaning of of the experience you're going to go into. Right. And, uh, And and we can recode that. And so your unconscious doesn't know the difference, right? So if you imagine yourself sitting at a movie theater and, um, you know, let's let's say it's a scary movie, you're going to feel that inside your body, right? You're going to jump, even though you know that you're sitting in the movie, you're still going to jump, you're still going to feel it, right? And then you can think about this. How, how about this as a little exercise? 
Could you just remember uh, a moment in the past that, uh, you know, was a, a really sad moment, something that, you know, maybe a funeral or something that, you know, w w didn't go the way you wanted? Yeah, and notice as you, as you maybe just close your eyes and think about that. And, and as you do that, that's not actually here, right? But as you do that, you do something into, just do it for me for a second, just just remember something in the past that didn't go great. And just notice what you have to do to remember that. Close your eyes, go internal. And here's a different question. Whereabouts is that memory? <laughs> when, you, when you think about it, if you were to guess, is it left or right, up or down, where is it? Really interesting. Try this, something else, think of a pleasant memory. So something that was great, maybe it was, you know, uh, graduation or the birth of your kid or, you know, wedding day or, or when you got asked to get married or whatever it was, think of something, a good memory, you know, going to the beach. And you do the same thing. You feel it and then you, you have a different experience in your body. You see that little process? And so we have all of these memories that are in this field that are around us and, and they're there. And so what's interesting to me is that we can actually use this system for our advantage. And we can actually start to create results in our mind before those results happen in the real world so that our brain codes those results up as safe. Okay, so just quick summary. Your unconscious is always telling you what is safe and what is not, okay? The unconscious gets those instructions from the internal representation in your mind and turns them into feeling, right? If you close your eyes, you can step in the way of this and you can change the meaning and the feeling of that experience. So talking about the person standing on stage, if we close our eyes and experience it with good feelings and do the recode, let go of the bad feelings, eventually the, the brain will recode its meaning of that same moment. Can I get a yes in the chat box there? Like it recodes the feeling. The feeling creates the meaning. If you change the feeling uh, about making lots of money from guilt to just, it's just how it is, then you will allow money to be in your life, right? If you change the feeling of going to the gym from hard work to just fun, and you can do that, when you change that, you'll just flow. And you don't have to, you don't have to struggle. Does that make sense? So, so one of the big things here with magnetic mind is you can have success without struggle because we realize that, that we're this meaning making machine, feelings to generate our meaning, and we can shift so that we can have what we want. Okay, very, very, very cool. So the best way to do this is actually part of our five step system, which is step two, which is called step into the end result or, or get the, um, you know, or get into the emotion of the end result. Okay, now I did this a couple of weeks ago and I also helped our, um, intuition uh, uh, crew, people in the Superconscious Intuition program um, with this. Okay, so just, just so that you understand that all of you can visualize and everything else. So first off, you can all see me here holding this pen. Now close your eyes and see that same me holding that pen in your mind. Okay, see it on the outside first, close your eyes and now see it on the inside. Give me a one in the chat box if you can do that. See it on the outside, close your eyes, see it on the inside. Cool, cool. You have to be able to do this. Now it's not the same, right? It's not the same as seeing it on the outside, okay? But that's how your brain sees on the inside, okay? So you see it on the outside, and now you'd see it on the inside, but, but just notice, okay, as you do it, so see it on the outside again, close your eyes, see it on the inside. Notice where in your brain you see it. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Who, who got it's kind of like in the middle here? Yeah. Interesting, eh? Like a projector projecting into the middle of your uh, brain there, hey? Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, so uh, so we can all do that uh, on the outside. Now do it, but but change the color of the pen or change the color of uh, my suit jacket and just and just see if you can do that. Interesting, eh? 
Very interesting. Bob uh, and others, if you struggle with this, it's a good exercise. You can all do this. Uh, that is, if, if we couldn't do this, we would never be able to remember someone's face, right? So we all can do this. It's just working and practicing on slowing it down enough. Does that make sense, everyone? It's about, if you couldn't do this, you wouldn't be able to remember uh, how to write. This is all done visually, okay? So it's okay. You just need to learn how to slow it down so that you can get it. Yeah. Okay, next one. You should all be able to hear this. Hear it on the outside? Now close your eyes and make that sound on the inside. And uh, give me number two when you can do that. When you can do that. Here it is on the outside. And now when you do it on the inside, make it into words like tink, 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 tink. Pop a three in the chat box if you can also do it in words. So you also have words inside of your internal representation, yeah? So this is what we mean by an internal representation. It's not the actual thing, it's you doing it internally. And this is what must happen in order for your brain uh, to receive what's there and then ascribe meaning to it, okay? You guys are doing great. All right, so pick something up on your desk or your computer or your phone, and like I'm holding this glass and feel it on the outside. Feel how it feels on the outside. And then when you're ready, close your eyes, put it down, and feel yourself feeling it on the inside. Who can do that? Feel something on the outside, then close your eyes and feel yourself feeling it on the inside. See if you can still get it. Who can do that? Number four, if you can do that. So you can, you can see on the inside and outside. You can hear on the inside and the outside. You can feel on the inside and the outside. You can close your eyes and you can think about something in the future you're really excited about. So now think of something that you're really excited about. Close your eyes. You might be excited about our event coming up in the USA. You might be excited about the event in a few weeks in Australia. What is something you're excited about? Feel it and notice that you can create feelings about something that hasn't happened yet. Isn't that interesting? So you're able to do this. Hey, try this one, one last thing. Try this one last thing. Is I want you to imagine that, uh, and so just, just with your hands out like this, just imagine in your right hand that um, you're holding a lemon, you know, like a cold lemon that's just come out of the fridge. Okay, just imagine that it's there. Feel how it might feel in your hand. Close your eyes, feel it. Notice what it might look like, this yellow lemon. It might have some, you might feel some, you know, coldness. It might, you know, have some water on it. Just feel a lemon. Just, just feel with your eyes closed and just see the best you can. And now just imagine that you bring that up, okay? Bring that up. See if you can smell that lemon. See if you can, see if you can, you can smell. And then when you're ready, just go ahead and take a big, take a big bite out of it. See how that goes. <laughs> Open your eyes, come back. Anyone, anyone able to taste it? Sour? Anyone go, oh, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that was mean well not unless you like lemons maybe you need some alkalinity isn't that interesting hey and so when we say visualization or step into it what we're meaning is create an internal representation okay of everything it's about being it does that make sense about being it and all of us have the ability to do this that's how we know whether the food we're about to eat is right for us or not. We make it up. 
you see you could think about your favorite meal and and you could start to have internal representations of that meal who finds this faster and give me a yes if you do you can be thinking about something you can then create it in your body the way that we do this is we create an internal representation that then instructs our body how to be so the whole point of recode is that when you tune into that which you want to create your body codes it up as good your body codes it up as good as safe as easy as allowed this is the whole point of recode that when you tune into yeah yeah i can have that of course that sounds great that feels awesome you have uh, the power to to create and associate meaning whatever meaning to whatever you want you can make it mean whatever you want it to mean the feeling creates the meaning the feeling creates the meaning and so it's it's really really nice uh to allow yourself uh to do this but i just wanted to spend a bit of time helping you learn a little bit more about visualization and how it works because where your mind goes your body follows where your mind goes your body follows okay your, your mind tells your body what is allowed what is safe what is available because then your body is only going to go to what is safe and if you understand this general premise that your unconscious is doing a really good job and keeping you alive what it says is we're not going to go where things don't feel good okay so our five steps just just as a quick summary our five steps to choose what you want step into it and feel it completely as you step in and feel it completely you're telling your body that's where you want to go three notice what it's like now notice what your body thinks about it right now then recode unplug change that feeling so that the now matches how it will be and then the last step is to take action abby's just typed in the summary there uh straight out of the book i love it and then you take action you see that guys because you easily take action if the thing feels good makes sense doesn't it you know makes sense okay so we'll have some fun with um visualization there'll be no more uh no more um what's it called no more lemon lemon tasting scenarios so sorry you know we're not going to say hold a glass of red wine and now <laughs> we're not going to do any tasting we're going to uh, we're going to do a rose technique to to learn how to 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 really where where to put the visualization uh, in your mind and uh and we're just going to practice a little bit of a focusing uh technique as well sound good cool let's have some fun so when you're ready um just palms face up okay palms face up and, and what i'm going to have you do in a second is, is just close your eyes and in your uh in your dominant hand we can do it right now i should close your eyes and in your dominant hand whether that's left or right um or, or if you're you know if you're both just choose one and uh and choose to experience that there's a beautiful rose in that hand and really choose to just experience a rose a beautiful it could be whatever color my roses is, is is red and it's got beautiful petals and and i'll start by first visualizing it but maybe you'll start by feeling it in your in your hand there a bit and you know you might want not want to push too hard because there might be some spikes and it might have just been freshly uh freshly cut and uh, might have some water on it but just allow yourself to experience a rose the best you can maybe you can smell the smell of it and just experience a beautiful rose in your dominant hand yeah and just do the best you can what would it be like? What might it feel like if you're holding it? Hmm. Where on your hand would the rose be sitting? Like, you know, would you be, would you just have it rested there? Where would the petals be? What would the texture of the petals be like? And 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 the stem, and maybe it's got a leaf or two, or yeah, just just really feels there a thorn sticking out. Just hmm. And then breathe in through your nose and see if you can smell it. And now just imagine that rose floating up out of your hand, up out of your hand. And we know it's a made up rose. 
Have the rose come up out of your hand in front of your face the best you can. And imagine it's floating right in front of your face. And now have it float up above your head. Imagine that rose up above your head, just hovering up there. And then take it, take it back so it's right above the middle of your head. And then it's very easy. Just allow it to just go down because it's obviously a picture, right? Allow it to go down right in the middle of your brain like there's a projector from the back of your brain shining uh, onto the, a screen in the middle of your brain. And just imagine there's a screen, like a movie screen in your mind, and that rose has just slid right onto that screen, right in the middle of your mind. And just imagine that the best you can. Imagine that you are at the back of that movie theater looking up and that movie theater is right there in the middle. Just do the best you can to get it right there, right in the middle. Got it. When you're ready, open your eyes, come back. Uh, got it. Cool. Fun little thing, eh? Fun, fun little thing. See, um, when I do meditations, uh, I'm mostly focused on teaching my brain what it is that I want to create. And, uh, and that's by completely being able to create the experience internally.